Hey, hello everybody. It's the Kids on the Escalator podcast. It is Tuesday night. How you doing over there, uh, Weinstock? What's happening? Doing great. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. that... Just drinking a little bit of coffee there. I've got coffee in this fancy mug. Look at this. Good job. Good is that job. Good? Yeah. Everybody should buy one. What are we at? What are we up to now? We sold them for uh, eighty we've bucks. Sold, we've Seventy sold, bucks. Uh, well, we're down to forty nine ninety nine because we're running wow. out of stock. We're just trying to ship them out. We've sold seven thousand of them. So, you know. Yeah. High demand. High demand, everybody. It's hard uh, to keep, keep them on in stock. It is. Um, hey, it was a fun day today. Guess what? I went to movies. Yay! For all our I friends like watching that. around this uh, fine world of ours. I went to movies. The movies pop up in Vancouver. Uh, for anyone who is not aware of what movies is, uh, well, if you've seen Clerks 2, it's the new, it's where they all work. Mm-hmm. With some of the greatest lines in comedy gold really they make fun of the lord of the rings which you love i know yeah well that was great yeah there's no yeah there's awesome stuff in there uh this is a character it's a kevin smith movie right so there's layers for these people and plus if you've seen clerks clerks too it's kind of the graduation of it right bringing them up to speed bringing them up to our age which, yeah uh, i heard clerks three is going to come out soon which is going to take place back at the uh, uh back at the um uh, clerk Ranch? stop and they're gonna have yeah. the weed the weed store, which kind of ties into Jane. But yeah, so, yeah, the last sure year does. Bob, so, man, lots of fun stuff there. But anyways, movies yeah. pop up in Vancouver. I had to go down. Took uh, Rat Alex with me today. You did. And, uh, we went down and uh, checked it out, and uh, we got ourselves a uh, cow tipper, <laughs> cow tipper hamburger. Uh, we got ourselves the uh, uh, hater taters, and uh, we got some root beer. So it was a uh, it was a fifty dollar trip. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's an expensive trip. But they have movies that, beer, so I bought my wife some movies beer, and the neighbor got some Jay and Silent Bob beer. So there you go. So you it's actually it's movies beer, or is it like a brand that they just put the movie's name on? Yeah, I think they they partnered with a brand in the Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, okay. and uh, yeah. So I believe that brand, from what I was told, was Main Street mm-hmm. Brewing. So Main Street Brewing did that. Okay. So I say they're not they're not giving you like Bud Light, Lime. No. No, no, saying no, no. it's something so it was a movie's beer it's like a lager oh so anyway yeah, oh, it's that, a lager okay it's a lager of which i don't drink anymore but i uh, my wife does so she had she, there you go she got some so there you go yeah so drink hi, her everybody up. we're hanging out we got a great show um uh, coming up we got a bunch of guests today and a bunch of really mm. cool stuff and an important topic that not a lot of people talk about which chris will get into in a little bit i also went mm. and visited one of your favorite stores today yeah when Gold i'm visiting Age. yeah uh, Golden Age Collectibles uh, in, on uh, Granville Street in Vancouver, and a shout out to Ryan Hanneman down there who guided me towards some amazing comics by one of our guests today. Yeah, which we'll get into. So uh, we'll show all that off in a minute. But in the meantime, well, you, do you want to see what I got over the week or over the weekend? Yes. Or no, it was just Monday. What did you get? Let me see. I don't know what's Lonnie doing. One sec. There we go. <laughs> Duke Kaboom. Yeah. No. Hashtag Keanu Reeves. I know. Keanu. Right? What can't Keanu do? So he really I is got, the most popular character. Dude, yeah. So I got, so I was out at uh, Toys R Us because I just like, it's just up the road. So I like yeah. to just jazz in there every once in a while. And this was on sale. This was on sale. How much? Like your dog's going to make a jump for it. And so I picked it up. And if you follow me on um, TikTok or Instagram, right. you'll see, you'll see my, my jumps. So so far, I lay, he jumped over four four Star Wars action figures successfully. What's the plan? Are you gonna try to get it to ten? Well, I don't know what he's gonna. Maybe we'll put some transformers down next and up the ramp, or put it in my backyard, right off the deck. Like who knows what what Crash Kaboom's gonna do next? You don't you don't know, you don't know. Or no, it was not Crash Kaboom. What's his name? Duke Kaboom. Duke right. Duke Kaboom. See, it's Evil Knievel, right? That's what. Yeah. Uh, and one of my students said, "Hey, it's Evil Knievel." Fitz loves. Uh, Fitz so, was the first guy. I know he that does. I saw that had that and uh Fitz was the see, first guy that I saw that had Duke Kaboom and uh gotta follow we, me fo- follow me on TikTok and you can see my my awesome we had the toy Kaboom we had jokes. a toy show a couple of weeks ago and we were showing mm. off some stuff do you guys have Duke Kaboom do you have to I had he jumped uh four Star Wars figures on my uh my TikTok there it's great <laughs> I saw successfully that yeah so we're gonna go for Transformers I think next or something we'll see but uh it, it was very cool it was on sale at Toys R Us I had to buy it so, yes <laughs> we've got guests everybody yeah. We've got guests. We've got a returning guest, JJ. How you Toronto, doing? JJ, JJ, Jason Laborde. Tell us 
what you're doing, man, because you're doing a shit ton of stuff. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show. Hi, JJ. Thank you, fellas. Nice to be back. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, working on uh, producing on a new show on CBC Music. I feel like I talked about it quite a bit last time I was on, but uh, it's a brand new show, first of its kind on uh, the Canadian broadcaster. It's called The Block, and it features uh, all Black artists, and uh, it's kind of a Black indie scene. A lot of people think of black music and they think, well, just hip hop, but it's not. It's black rock, black country hip hop, uh, but then soca, reggae and Afro beats and all the genres, folk. Uh, and we're just kind of building a, a community of black artists uh, on CBC Music. So, yeah, I'm producing on that. And of course, I have my podcast with my former co-host uh, from uh, Flow 93.5 back when we were co-hosts on the air, Melanie Martin. It's called Unfiltered with JJ and Melanie. So there you go. All of it. That's all the, all the stuff, all the things. And now we have uh, James <laughs> White. Now listen, <laughs> the legendary Jimmy from 95, uh, Cruise 95 uh, in Edmonton. Now listen, you've been giving Lachlan Cross a lot of shit for coming on this show. He's telling us, he's like, Jimmy keeps picking on me, keeps picking on me. Why does Lachlan get to come on this show when he doesn't know shit about Wanda <laughs> or nothing? He knows nothing about any of it. <laughs> <laughs> True. Like, <laughs> Like when WandaVision first came out, he's like, who's Wanda? What's Vision? Like what? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's frustrating working with him. Well, we, we've got you here. Cause uh, Lachlan is like, yo, Jimmy would be a great guest uh, on the show. Cause he knows more than I do, but we did you a favor. Cause Chris gave him the WandaVision like full on. And we, we converted him, I think, cause he was out. Then he came back in and, uh, and then he was like, well, you got to get Jimmy on here. Cause he keeps giving me shit. So welcome. To kids on the Escalator <laughs> podcast, awesome. man. Tell Thanks us what. Uh, tell us all about you, James. Where are you from, and what you up to? Uh, I've I'm, I've lived in Edmonton for the last I don't know eighteen years. Uh, I don't know uh, seventeen years. I think uh, I've been on ninety five seven Cruise FM for the last almost five years. I'm I'm the king of anything that involves science fiction, uh, comic books, any of that kind of stuff huge star wars nerd on top of everything and and i'm a professional leprechaun <laughs> and we got that picture in the promo i think i think that's what and, we had uh yeah that was the day after saint patty's day um <laughs> and and then uh the only male uh, little person exotic dancer in western canada oh you currently smell. hold that title or it's fact it's fact there's uh, at least as far as I know, license wise, because my agents contacts me for to stuff in BC, in Saskatchewan, Winnipeg. I haven't gone as far east. So I think there is a little person in Montreal that does the same. Ah. We get all the guests. We got them all. We got the best <laughs> guests. It's amazing. You fit in perfect for this show. JJ. Yes, uh, you're bringing somebody with you, Chris. Uh, I'm going to let him in here right now, but um, yeah. uh, Chris is uh, very excited about this, and all, and, um, and being a fellow comic book uh, fan and and, and artist, uh, we're bringing uh, Ken Lashley in. Ken uh, Lashley, is he in? I see him. I can slowly see phasing in. They always phase in in our show. It's like <laughs> slowly coming in, right? Teleportation. See how it goes. Can you guys hear me or no? We can we hear can you. Hear you. Yeah. Yep. But I can't see. I can't Let's see how it goes. Hmm. Shall I? Shall I introduce you while you're sure? Bring it on. Give it, let's up. give us the, the intro, camera. Up. JJ, yeah. Ken Lashley. He's I'm, working, I'm gonna unplug this whole thing. All right. <laughs> Friend of mine from back in the day. He is a comic book artist, uh, world famous for DC, Marvel, Lucasfilm. Hasbro, you name it. If it's awesome, he is drawn on it. He's drawn all your favorite comic book characters. Uh, yes, I have. Uh, on the Joker, aren't you? No, I'm not. Nice. I'm working for Marvel. Marvel, okay. Uh, he's also a husband and a dad. <laughs> Hold on, let me just try and get this thing working, this camera thing, but we'll see how okay. it goes. It just seems like it's not working. Well, I appreciate just... you coming on the show, making the time, everybody, today as we roll through. 
Um, big comic thing. We've been covering a lot of stuff on this show over the last thing, uh, last few weeks, as JJ uh, talked about. We we've um, there he hey, is. There he is. Hey Ken. Hey. Um, hey we've covered going? obviously the Wandavision breakdown. We've covered so Ooh. many different like aspects. We covered Mandalorian. We you know that was a great way to kick off a podcast, which was starting covering the Mandalorian from top to bottom. Um, so we've done a lot of different. Uh, uh, areas comics uh, obviously being a, a massive part of what we do here um and chris up until 30 seconds ago is the only guy that i know that drew comics so here we are <laughs> <laughs> you're miles above me wow. my friend i was i was going to school when you started man and i was i'm a big fan yeah i'm only 12 i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> i'm only I'm, I'm just a little bit younger <laughs> Yeah. Welcome, Thanks, fellas. Lots that, to man. cover. Chris, you go ahead. I'm go I'm the outsider on this one. Oh man, well, I was just, I you know, aside from uh, talking about all your awesome work, um, I, for I teach uh, comic book illustration here just for the kids in the public schools, okay. and I was just wondering if you would share uh, your your process. Like, do you start off with pencils and ink? Do you go right in with a computer? Do you use a computer? Wow. Um, it really depends on what I'm, what the deadline says for me to do oh, and, yeah. and, uh, and where we are in the, where we are in the process. Um, I have a very unique way. Uh, editors love it. Either you love it or you hate it. Um, but um, it's, it, it makes it extremely fast. Um, but I draw, I do layouts, really quick layouts and then draw straight to ink. So I don't, wow. I, don't I don't have time to go back and and you know, do a pencil and then scan it and then do an ink. It no light boxing or light. No, no, I, even, that, I had a light pencils. table. I, I don't even. I don't even use it. It's just. It's just. Uh, it's just another step, a necessary step that I don't. Um, as I get older, I don't need as much. Before I used to. It is know, time noodle, consuming. Noodle every part of it and say, oh, I need to do this. And um, currently, I'm drawing um, a five issue mini series for a uh, for a, a very uh, popular brand for Marvel. Uh, it's going to be announced probably at the end of at the end of May. But I just finished doing a Carnage book that comes out uh, tomorrow, um, and um, I did Voices, which is a Black Panther book. I mean, so I mean, all these things are part of part of who you are and what you do. But I am really am a change my. I used to be one of those guys, pencil it all out, then ink it. And I, then I didn't ink for a long time, and then I said, okay, well, let me just get back into it. So personally, I, I just I just go for it. I probably can do a book in about ten days, which is which wow. is ridiculous um i tell them it takes three weeks because i want time to do other stuff <laughs> smart uh, very smart i, I, I want to be able to plan my weeks i work for hasbro and lucasfilm and uh i do the covers for dc i worked on the new black batman i did the cover for like a couple of those um i just did a, a cover for i did a, a joker thing that um i just finished doing that i'm doing well as i'm looking around my office a uh, non-stop spider-man just did a cover for that um i'm doing a cover for the signal uh which is the, another dc book um magic the gathering uh dungeons and dragons i'm just looking around oh. my table here x-men uh, chris is looking around the, this is why uh, i'm not getting any work this guy's doing this it is all. awesome yeah it's cool this is everything you're mentioning it's just like ding 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 well, it's, just, it's just you know you get a chance to do all these things you should you say yes right and then uh, I'm, I'm doing a book with kevin uh, kevin grievous uh, uh underworld actor and you know all that stuff we're doing a, a book together on dark storm um, for uh, you know we, uh, Simon Schuster, so I'm doing that as well. I got a lot of things on the go, so I just have fun oh, with man. it. You know, I mean, it's wow. so I... second. Hey, James, wow. what did you do this morning? <laughs> Chris, what did you do this morning? JJ, I'm not talking you... anymore. I'm done. I I'm made sorry. eggs for the kids, and I went out. Great. <laughs> well, I just had one more question. I was just so. You're, it's funny. Uh, I went to the Joe Kubert School, and uh, I, I I loved inking. I was taught to ink by by. Uh, Kim DeMolder, who did a lot of Swamp Thing stuff, yeah. right? And uh, I was wondering if, if when, have you ever had Mark Farmer do any inks of your pencils? Yes, he did. Mark Farmer, um, early on my career, on the early, um, way, way early in my career, when, you know, I was a baby and, and, and he was he was way more seasoned than I was. Um, so I'm sure he didn't learn much off of my stuff. My stuff was pretty, oh. my pretty, my stuff was pretty, uh, pretty, pretty weak back then. Actually, not that much better now. I'm just faster. But you know how it is is that you, what you do is you just yeah. He he worked with my stuff. I learned a lot from those guys. Those guys were like pro professional brush, old school inkers. Where um, I use tech pens now. I just use tech pens. I, I can't. I don't have. I don't have that line. So um, although it looks like I do because I go over it twice or three times with a with a pen, so it looks like I have. I did it with one stroke with a brush. But uh, no, I just I just 
it, for me, it's immediacy. Like I want to get it done and move forward. And I also, um, I'm a, also a beta tester for Adobe. So I, I work on Fresca, their, their, their digital software and some other stuff. And then I you was know, sort of beta tester for some stuff. So I have a Cintiq and I'm very fortunate to work digitally. Um, so, but uh, digital stuff for me is only for when I use, uh, when I'm designing. So when, if I'm designing stuff for a toy line, like GI Joe or star Wars or whatever, that's all digital. It's just quicker, wow. easier, faster. When I'm doing comic books, I'm old school and traditional. Nice. I, li- I, I like it I, to be on paper, touch the paper, all that stuff. That's that's still who I am. And uh, um, there's also uh, another side because I want to at the end have a stack of accomplishments. You know, like this this is what it is, right? So I guess so. You're um, doing great. <laughs> so I appreciate it. But it, but one of the things I do is is I definitely like to see the old school inks. And also back in those days, I don't get a lot of those pages back. So I still have those pages and you look at them and you're like, this is what this inker did. This amazing job. Fix this, yeah. fix that, you know, but I'm glad I ink my own stuff now because it's, it teaches me a lot about what I, what, what I should do, how I do things. You can be economized in line. You can be smart about it, you know, smarter than you were before. So uh, yeah, I mean, inking has really changed how I think of penciling. You know, nice. sure. Yeah. I, 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 I loved inking. I was always, I found it very therapeutic. And really? I was using the old school, like with, with the brush, it was so messy, right? Yeah. The brush and the ink and washing it out. But yeah. just doing those lines, the thick to thin, you know, around yeah. like a plant. I, I really, really loved it. Appreciate it. I'm sure yeah, these guys yeah, don't just... want to talk about art all night. Do you want to talk about art all night? I don't think so. Right? <laughs> okay. uh, well, no, I was just, just one more point I want to throw in just because, oh. <laughs> just to the kids, just that you can do it, right? Like, like yeah. to kids today's, it's like those yeah. jobs are out there. You can draw and, and yeah. actually have fun doing it and get paid for yeah, it. Yeah, I've been, I'm, uh, been very fortunate. I mean, to be able to yeah. travel the world with my kids, you know, like I think, you know, I mean, well, before all this pandemic stuff, yeah, I mean, I was very fortunate. I could take my kids to Australia, I took my kids to, you know, I went to Japan and I traveled the world. It was just, it was San very San Diego? Fortunate. San Diego many times, <laughs> many times. San Diego, it's, it's so bad. They've gone to San Diego so many times that they didn't want to go last two years ago. <laughs> wow. And I was just like, what? Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You know, but it's uh, San Diego is one of my favorite trips. Is my, you know, it's one of those. Uh, it's a, I know it's a business trip, business trip, but mm. but I love going there. And I, you know, some of the best fans. I have some of the best fans in the world. So I had a meet and greet. I had a dinner uh, when, when I was in San Diego last time. The first time I ever did was a dinner in San Diego, and uh, fifteen people signed up. Um, and, uh, it was a very, it was very fun, but a little bit, a little bit awkward because, you know, cause sometimes, you know, there's a, people want to ask you questions, right? So yeah. you spent a good two hours just answering questions, you know, but, uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Oh, cool. Okay, man. You so must miss cool. it. Everyone here, uh, uh, Jamie, have you been to uh, San Diego comic-con or any of those? Have you been to, um, any of those kind of big ones? We have what the Vancouver expo here where mm-hmm. I am, oh, yeah, where are you located, here, Ken? Toronto. Where are you? Where I'm you in live? Toronto. You're in Toronto. You're yeah. in Edmonton, James. Um, I'm in JJ. Kingston. Yeah. So, have you guys all been to any of these as a fan? I've been to all, all the ones in Toronto, between Toronto and Niagara Falls. I've been to all the yeah. the cons and the expos and the the fests and and all of them. Um, yeah, year after year, I go just just to mill around, just to be in it. You know, yeah. say hi to Ken. <laughs> and that's, that's hey, what's fun. going on, man? <laughs> It's, it's uh you haven't really been, again no offense to the Toronto guys I mean I love them to that they got some great shows but you haven't really been to a show until you go to three shows you know Toronto was one of them and then you San Diego Comic Con New York Sim, New York Comic Con mm-hmm. and C two E two those those three shows once you go to those three shows it's it's scale the scale is just out of control I mean like one hundred and thirty thousand people show up to the one in San Diego it's yeah. like it's like it's bizarre like you land like you know you get on the airplane and it's people all the people you ask for autographs are on your airplane like it's like yeah. I, i've gone on the airplane and saw oh my god like half of the toronto art community is on my plane that's so and awesome then you, you land and it's you know the whole town take is taken over by a comic so it's like they wrap buildings with superman logos you know 40 foot high it's just it's just in the most insane Thing. you should everyone should go once in their lifetime and new york is getting it's pretty close yeah but san diego is the weather and it's, it's everything it's all hollywood so close so it's just crazy how much has the vibe changed since mm. uh disney bought everything um from my perspective mm. the only thing was a little bit more <laughs> difficult was uh getting into their portal to get paid i mean that was, that was the, only <laughs> thing that, the only thing that was like what am I doing here? What do I got to fill out? Like what's right. going on here? Um, yeah. That was it. But nothing's, I mean, the creative, the creative stuff is the creative stuff. Um, I'm very fortunate because I work at the Hasbro end of it too. 
Um, so I get to, you know, see things two years in development. So right. um, unfortunately I get to know what's happening, you know, and I know, Oh, this is the toy they're going to make. And this is what it looks like. And, you know, I'm, I'm way ahead of the curve, which is a blessing and a curse, um, uh, which is, it's cool. I mean, I try not to tell my kids, they, they ask me questions and I go, if I, if I, if I ring this bell for you, you can't unring it. So, <laughs> you know, so they're like, my oldest is like, okay, fine. Tell me, tell me, but she was, she was good. I can tell you a cool story. Yeah. Um, years, a few years ago, I was working on, I work with Hasbro all the time and I've always worked with them. You know, we do zoom calls and do whatever, but this time they were saying, we want you to fly in. And I was like, well, fly in. Like, what for? Like working with your 15 years. Yeah, I mean, we, I've been there a couple of times, maybe 10 times. Um, but not, you know, not for work, just kind of, Hey, let's go and hang out. But they were like, we, we really need you to be physically in the building. Okay. So I fly out. Um, I get there to me and VP and a few other high level people. And I was like, what's up? And they're like, well, we brought you in. Thanks a lot, Ken. Um, this is to work on infinity war. And I was like, Oh, cool. All right. You know, you could have just, you know, and I said, no. And then it's like, no, these are the images that can't leave the building. Like, Phew. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, these are all the characters that die. Oh, wow. And I was like, what is wrong with you, man? <laughs> like, 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 what is, what is wrong with you, man? You can, like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, you should be put, like, put it all out there. And I stood there and he goes, yeah, these are the characters that don't come back. This, and, we, and, we want, and we want you to come in and do some, to do some technical drawings for this, this, and this. Not this character because that character just appeared. Not this character. I mean, like all, like, like did, the whole did you think movie. you were losing your mind? Yeah, this, is like, this is like two years out probably. Wow. Two years out. So I'm like, I'm like blown away and shocked and all that stuff. But, it's, uh, um, but that's the second time he's done that. The other time he did when I was working on Lucasfilm for a uh, uh, work on uh, uh, it was anyway did that, did that twice the star wars thing with the hand, he did the same thing with han solo I, I'll, I'll let you figure out what he did with that but uh, but it's a sort of like it was like sh shook right but that's what i mean so the reason why he didn't give it to me is because it couldn't leave the building so i worked for right. four days on some key art for the toy line and it was very different they even had a, a working script was there that was not and some things really changed and and changed a lot of things changed but right one of the key one of the key things that changed was uh well maybe I'll maybe i'll come back and tell you some other time but there but there was, a, there was a big there was a big key change i was like and it was like the center of what we did those four days and then when we saw the movie it was completely it was different the shift was different but right it, but that's what i mean about um the new stuff like wandavision and stuff is the first thing i've worked i've seen that i haven't worked on or don't know anything about and it was awesome to just sort of like enjoy it as a fan and and watch it and speculate and all that stuff yeah you know and try not to use my my comic hat on it because i was like well that's not going to happen because this is tied to this and this is tied to this so they're not going to use that character is it but but just go as a fan and enjoy it it's great you know so you almost amazing. have to read you almost have to read the uh, obscure comic series like skeletron or something like chris is like or <laughs> where you don't it's not tied into a universe and so you yeah. can be surprised by something because you must yeah. you know there must be a point where you're like ah oh, come on i know oh, yeah. yeah it's like you know it, it is kind of it's it's awesome it can be uh you know what i mean um <laughs> it is it is tough it is okay i mean i'll tell you the star wars story real quick i know so i i go there and i'm working on i was there for another brand and they said we want you to work on uh, I was there for uh, Voltron. Voltron, before Voltron came out, they were trying to make a toy line with Hasbro and they couldn't figure it out. So I went to the, I was at the Voltron meeting. I got flown in. I went to the, Hasbro has two sides. There's one side where like the art side where you work and everyone's kind of cool. And then they have this boutique side where this, where they, they bring in all the, the big name people to come and, you know, sort of like, this is our beautiful boardroom with all the fancy things that, you know, right. that I've never seen. Right. So then I was going to the other side that day and I was like, Oh, I've never been over here. This is, this is fancy. You have people serving you drinks over here. It's pretty wild. So um, I was there with a, uh, so DreamWorks was, was pitching because DreamWorks was, was making this idea. And, so I did the, did what I had to do. But as I was going over there, our head art director, we were walking and then there's a Star Wars room and the Star Wars room had the whole movie laid out. Now this is probably about 18 months out. So this is the whole movie is laid out. All the toys are there. And Wait, I guess which, movie, my, which movie was it? This is, this is the, uh, um, the first one, the, 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 when they came me back in name, but now it's right. not the Force Awakens. Force Awakens. So it's so the right. brand new, the, the brand new, the, the new, the, the new, the new one, the newest the new one trilogy, of the three, right. the first of the three. So I'm thinking, no, I'm not going to look in there. I, I'm not going to go in there. I'm not going to look. I'm just going to keep 
going down the hall. I don't care who's in there. So, <laughs> and so I'm walking and someone stops to the guy because my guy is like the guy I'm going with is like the head honcho. So there's everyone, he can't walk out of the building with someone asking him a question about something. So of course you, what you always do and you know, you kind of, you know, that, that mode where you're talking to someone, someone's talking to somebody and you kind of like lean back. So you don't hear what they're saying. Like you kind of push back. So you don't, so I did that, but I'm standing in front of the doorway of the star Wars room with all the stuff. And somebody's working in there and he looks up and he goes, Ken, I know you want to come in here, man. <laughs> I, I know you want to, I know you want to see the stuff. And I said, no, I refuse. So I, I will stick to my guns. We went, we went to the meeting. It was great. Afterwards, we're having dinner. So we're having dinner and we're just talking. And he says, do you want to know something about Star Wars? And I was like, no. And then we have, we keep eating dinner. By the end of the dinner, he goes, you want to know, come on, you want to know one thing. I said, okay, tell me, okay, one thing. Just tell me one thing. And he goes, Han Solo dies. And I went, you could have said that was anything, <laughs> any. that's the thing. You, you, know what I mean? you could have said anything. <laughs> Why would Did you, you believe him? What kind, of, what kind of person are you to say that? Right. So, <laughs> so of course, what I do is I call my wife, I call my wife. And she goes, oh, how the meeting is going? I go, oh, that's awesome. Just so you know, uh, Han Solo dies in the next <laughs> time. And, oh. and, I, and I get off the phone. She calls me right back. She goes, what kind of person are you? I said, hey. Is it marriage about sharing? Is it marriage about sharing? <laughs> that's right. you know, so that's gonna be that, good that's, times that's and bad. bad. That's, it. that's that's my world. That's been my world for the last, I mean, years. You know, I'm working on, yeah, man. I'm working on some some character that is like in the Spider-Man universe, wears black, rhymes with Penum. You know what I mean? And it's like it's like this really cool idea. Working with the creator of Penum. You know what I mean? So it's like I have this amazing, 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 amazing job that I'm working on. So um, it's just cool. Like I get to work on these things way before, you know. So it's it's not it's 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 kind of fun, but not. I mean, but it's it's not like you're not you're not blown away by all this stuff. And I know some of these actors who are in some of these movies. So you like I have personal friendships with people, mm. and then my kids have met them. So we go to movies and we go, oh, there's Damon, you know, and, and, <laughs> and they're pointing at the screen, you know, in a, in a movie, and they're like, oh, there's Damon, oh, Damon, you know, the guy who fights Black Widow uh, in the in the in Civil War, you know, so I'm right. gonna drop the vial, you know, he's gonna drop the vial, like he's a friend of mine, he's like, he's like a friend, friend, yeah. So my kids are like, oh my god, look how David, Damon, Damon, like Damon's in the movie, and everyone around us is like, what is this kid talking about? Like, what is this? Who is this? And I'm did, like, did you ever think that 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 your world would go from paper, no, literally to the screen or to nah, the, man. the the story? I mean, when I went to see Black, when I went to see Black Panther, um, they took like pages from my my books and put them right on screen. Like the, yeah. the Panther God scene is right out of my book. Like I I I laid that out in this room, you know. What yeah. I mean? So it's like to see it on screen. It was an, it was an emotional experience. Um, uh, I I had I had a, an emotional response to it that I didn't think I would have. I bet you know I thought oh you know it's a movie. But I mean, I never thought they'd ever make a Black Panther movie. I just wouldn't like, come on, it's never going to happen. I had to see it on screen. And I was also um, the, the guest at Disney at Disney at Sea, you know, the uh, Disney Marvel Day at Sea. Yeah. Um, so they, I was the, the guest and they flew me. I was, I was on a cruise ship for five days. Listen, my life is bizarre. So I was on a cruise ship for five days and I'm the Marvel expert and I'm drawing. It's just a weird thing, right? So um, I just want to float in the pool. Stop asking me questions. <laughs> well, here's the best part. I mean, like I was the, the whole the whole thing of being on on their on their uh, cruise ship is my my responsibility was literally it was two hours. Yeah. Like that was for the whole week. My responsibility was two hours and it was both on the same day. So the rest of the five days was a cruise, a free cruise for me and my family. Like that's a sweet gig, the perks, um, man. And um, and I kept asking a lot of questions, like, "Is that all I'm supposed to do? Are you sure that's all I'm supposed to do? And is there nothing else? Like, what what, else, what I gotta pay for? You know, like, like, like <laughs> it was just no, you're part of that. That's your your talent. Wow. It was an amazing experience. But what, but Black Panther was just out, or about about to come out, and it was Black Panther was played on the ship constantly. It was all the Marvel movies were played throughout the whole movie. So it was. So it was it was a great experience. They put all the Marvel movies. Wow. I mean, it was a it was an amazing experience. But watching the kids, um, you know, wearing Black Panther costumes and little, little kids who are not of color wearing it was it was just an amazing. Doesn't experience. that doesn't that blow your mind? Yeah, it, it blows your mind, to, right? To it think about where, where Black Panther yeah. came from, the origin yeah. of that that character uh, yeah. to you know kids of all races and 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 yeah. and people <laughs> of all yeah. ages. It, are yeah. rocking the Black Panther uh, it, it is, logo. I, I felt, and, and I felt a little bit, I get a lot of you. There was a part where I felt, hey, man, this is our hero. 
Like, well, what's, what's, all, what's all this? What's all this? And but it's, it's you know, when I met when I met Chadwick, uh, when I met him, the actor, he Chadwick was so Bill. gracious and kind. And, yeah. and, you know, we had a moment in San Diego, San Diego. Um, um, I, I was signing after him um, in, the, in the Marvel in the Marvel booth. And um, when I got there, they said, hey, you want to meet him? Do you want to you meet him? I go, yeah, sure. So they took me up on stage and we had a, like a good five minute conversation and we talked. And, he, he, and here's the thing that's so wild. He thanked me for saying, for doing the heavy lifting and making this character amazing. Like he, he thanked me. He said, I want to thank you for all the work. And I was like, what, what, so what are you talking about? For those about? that don't know, was it 2009 you brought? 2000. You realized? Yeah. 2001? Yeah, I think it was, two, I'm not sure when it was, but. I'm old, so I can't remember which which which, uh, which time. But I did Black Panther. You relaunched Black Panther, I mean, essentially. I relaunched Black Panther, and I did that a, a few years ago. I mean, yeah. at the time, and I and it was one of the most. I did it with Reggie Hudlin, who was a, 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 a film producer, and um, Reggie did the writing. I did the art, yeah. um, and it was called The Deadliest Species, and it was I think it was 2009, and it was uh, Shiri taking over the the Black Panther uh, mantle, yeah. and I designed Shiri's costume. So hopefully that makes it in the next one. Yeah. Um, and it was one of those opportunities to just to work on it. It was amazing to work on, you know. Yeah. So they had some really did, great scenes. The, the, the writing was so strong that I got a chance to do a lot of really great scenes. Um, and those scenes became sort of one of the more iconic images of Black Panther in the history of Black Panther. And I'm yeah. very fortunate to work on this. Probably known as one of the better um, miniseries in the history of Black Panther. So I, it's, it's always pretty good. pretty sure I have a, an autographed copy of that. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you in, do. One of my great see, do, we, do we have... Things, do we have theories as to what they're going to do, or is this some information you may be privy to as what they're going to do with um, the next Black Panther? Well, I, well, speaking as a fan, I, I would say that it's it's it would be I, I I'm kind of conflicted because I think we, we can we can I want I want that character to be on screen, mm -hmm. right? so that that's what that's what I think is important. But I'm also I understand why they why they want to not recast, right? So I I get that, but um. You recast other characters all the time, and it doesn't seem to be a problem, right? But yeah. I just think that because of the way how iconic it, he he his his portrayal was, that I, I understand. But yeah. I think Black Panther may be more important than than the legacy of one actor. I just mm. think it's to, in some ways. I think that's kind of sad that we won't see Black Panther. But maybe yeah. that's not forever. Maybe that's for now, which is which is you know classy. But I mean, if they do the the Deli species story and or and see her on screen and my design it, it would be great too like so yeah I mean, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted but um i mean it, it's it's amazing what marvel has done with these ideas i mean yeah. these these like these comic book ideas you know so it's it's truly amazing to watch like watching you know getting up at three o'clock in the morning with my daughter to watch to watch the, these episodes like we we make it a thing every week we, we yeah. stay up till three o'clock and watch them before anyone else because they don't get anyone spoilers i mean that's yeah. how it is right amazing so I think part of the panel today, we are going to actually dive into <laughs> yeah, it's like black, black superheroes. But, uh, you know, it's funny. Mm -hmm. I, I hope we get to the point and maybe mm -hmm. actually we should end with this. But I hope we get to the point where we don't have to say yeah. black superheroes, superheroes yeah. of color, just, yeah. just superheroes. Because we don't say white superheroes. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a thing we say, right? No, it's not a thing we so say. So it would be nice if the future of this is that we don't have to say that we can just say. Well, I mean, I stopped doing interviews on Black History Month about five years ago because I thought it was interesting that I'm only getting asked to do these interviews in Black History Month. Yeah. Right? And so I, so I said, well, if I'm not a story in, in January, don't don't really talk to me in February. So I, yeah. stopped, I stopped doing that. And and I would tell people that I was like, yeah. oh, that's great. You know, you want to talk to me, but I'm not going to. You know. Yeah. Okay. I'm hip. Yeah. I'm hip to what you're doing here. Yeah, I'm, I'm on to you. I'm on to you. But I, Chris, but I think Chris it, you wanted you had a point on um, on some of this the different kinds of recasting and characters. Yeah. Well, I, the thing I liked about the Scarlet Witch is that uh, a lot of the the people watching don't realize she's from the '60s and she's a, a very yeah. a very early character. And you know, being a female, it makes her a minority character there as well. And the extent of power that she had there, I was wondering if you guys had any other hidden gems from back in the '70s. Um, like I, I, I was talking about uh, a Deathlock. I thought would be great if they brought something to do with instead of creating a spinoff of a character, which is easy for a writer to do if the character is already popular. But some mm -hmm. hidden gems from back in the '70s. If you guys had any you wanted to throw out and talk about, Jimmy, what do you think, buddy? Who are some of your favorites? Oh, I'm I'm a fan. I'm a fan of uh, Lady Deathstrike. Yeah. Is a, is a huge. Like there's so much you can do with that character, and like 
origin and like everything yeah. and her hate for Wolverine and yeah. like that whole, <laughs> mm -hmm. that Dynamic. whole story. I think she yeah. would be, be a big one. She yeah. became a Reaver eventually as well too, right? I have her down on my list as one, so I would like to see as well. Yeah. Of course, Alpha Flight being Canadian, I would love to see X3, yeah. uh, Laura go off and, and after Logan continue right from there and have Alpha Flight come in and have a uh, guardian or vindicator, whatever you want to call them, lead yeah. them. I think that would be incredible. I'd like to see that, uh, but I'd like to, uh, anybody else. You know, I, I think the time is right right now in this place in history. The time is right for the anti-hero. I feel like we're in a place uh, in, in history where, you know, um, civil liberties are being trampled, where uh, people are rising up against governments, corporations, they're pushing back. Um, and it's, it's a very similar atmosphere to the birth of the golden age of, of comics, right? X-Men was about rebellion, about being outcasts, about being rebels, about pushing back. It was a, you know, it was, it was a metaphor for the, for the times. And I think that taking some, I, I, I keep thinking about the, the hero, the, the or rather the villains or the more tragic characters from, from Luke Cage, Black Mariah, Cotton Mouth, you know, people who those stories that were were, were shown on on Netflix from from the, the the Luke Cage TV show, the way that those characters were written in the TV show, uh, they weren't they weren't thugs. They weren't they were people who were had a story, you know, and and were trying to to succeed in life, and were thinking about legacy and thinking about more than what the the stereotype used to be, right? About petty crime and drugs and stuff like that. So I would like to see some of those heroes or anti-heroes or villains, but, you know, Venom was a villain too. So, you, you know, just kind of rethought and, and reimagined uh, in sort of the new world we're living in right now. Yeah. Chris, you, uh, you were talking, um, we were talking off air about recasting. And to your point, mm -hmm. I want to touch a little bit more on your point of um, how it's easy to just, redo a character and whether it be um like a like oh and now to, i guess to jj's point like it's a time of rebirth a bit on some stuff but does everything have to be recast yeah well that's my point is like to pull some hidden gems out uh f from from the past that they they could maybe even alter a bit so that the fan base isn't going, oh, you changed my beloved character, mm. you know? Um, Strange Academy is is a comic book that I've, I've really been enjoying lately. And it's, uh, I can see that transferring really well. It's, it, it'd be a, like a Harry Potter theme almost kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but again, uh, the teachers in there are, are, there's some amazing teachers in there. And one of my favorite is uh, Dr. Voodoo from way back. I've got all, a lot of the comic books from back then. I just thought he would spin off to be a really good uh, character for a Doctor Strange movie as well. Yeah, I think he'd uh, or spin off to his own. Right. Strange Academy is one of my, my. Uh, I was lucky enough to get the first uh, copy of that too, is issue number one, right before the pandemic hit, I think when all that went down. Uh, <laughs> but that, that's a really good, that's a good one there. I really like that one a lot, Strange Academy. Well, not going back to the 60s, but I'm wearing this Purple Rain t-shirt for yes. a reason. In the 80s, I don't know if you guys, this, is, this might be like deep, I, I, maybe not for, for Chris and Ken, but there was a character, he's only in a couple episodes, uh, episodes rather, issues of Spectacular Spider-Man. His name was Ace. You guys remember Ace? Ace? And he was kind of like an amalgam of Prince and Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. And he fought Spider-Man and Spider-Man could not beat him. He was part of this street gang called the Reapers. And you guys can wildly Google in the background if you want oh, wow. to. But he <laughs> was, he was basically like an ex- street gang member who uh for a bunch of reasons left the street gangs and was just kind of this vigilante anti-hero kind of guy but he looked just like prince and he dressed mm -hmm. just like michael jackson and he rode wow. like the, he rode like it was like i think it was a white version of the prince motorcycle from purple rain and man i was so intrigued by this character like for me it brought all my worlds together you know yeah. music and comic books i was like this is like the perfect character for JJ. It was like 1989 or, or whatever it was, but mm -hmm. uh, he was only in like two or three uh, editions. Spider-Man couldn't beat him. He apparently had a, oh, a, a sense that that's like that 
matched Spider-Man spider sense. Can I, am I ringing any bells for you? Do you remember this guy, Ace? Oh, your mic, your mic is, your mic is turned off. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. No, nope. this is fun though. We'll see how long it goes. Hold on. <laughs> we can't hear you. I'm gonna send him a note. We can <laughs> hear you. There we go. Now <laughs> he knows. <laughs> James, you still read comics? Do you still collect them? Uh, I haven't in a while, no. Do you have a comic store in Edmonton? There's got to be what, a couple. Oh, there's there's a couple, but I'm more into the an- animated and, and movie stuff. And I kind of delve into that world, especially in radio, because, it's, you know, I do a lot of review of a lot of that kind of stuff for our show and and that kind of stuff must be frustrating being on a show with a bunch of guys that don't know as much as you <laughs> and then you're trying to have one of these conversations and it's like geez just go watch the movie <laughs> not not only do they not know about it they don't want to know about it and they want to make fun <laughs> of the fact that i yeah. know about it. no those yeah. guys ken we had we had the uh, james co-host uh, from the 95 cruise in uh, lachlan cross on here and he had he was almost out him and dean blundell from this network were almost out of wanda and Chris had to pull him back in and just said, wait. And it was great because Chris was able to break down, listen, these three things happen. Then there's going to be three more and these things are going to happen. And then these three things are going to happen. And uh, we were able to get them back. And then he was like, you got to get James on here because he's bugging the hell out of me about coming on the show. And he knows more about it. The um, On the Wanda side, uh, Ken, one of the things you talked about was um, spoiler. And you were able to watch that kind of for the first, you were able to watch that and not be spoiled. But did you have anything at all in there that you were like kind of knew where they were going with it? Ah, he's still Mike. Your mic, your mic is. uh, You're still Mike, buddy. Your mic is still. Your uh, mic is messed up. Your mic, we can't hear you. Yeah, I think your mic is unplugged, possibly. He probably had. He probably just no. He probably just laid out some ten of the best shit. (laughs) (laughs) The best part of it. Let's see if I can get. Oh, there we go. There he is. Hey, he's back. So it's uh, it's my too cool mic. It's actually doing too much stuff. So uh, is it, you guys can hear me now? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. we got you. Yeah, well, it's like the problem is that I, I'm in, you know, you know what's embargoed and what's not and what characters they can use, what characters you can't, right? right. So like, because you're working on certain things, you kind of know, well, yeah, well, they can't use this character. This character won't show up here because of this and because of this, and because of that. So it's kind of one of those things where everyone's wish, the wish list is amazing, but the track, the, the, the reality is these characters can't be used because they're already over here. Right. Um, so, but it's fun. But I mean, from my perspective, it's like there's so many people have made fun, and they always do that fun stuff and make fun of you know the you know oh, you draw comic books. So is there any money in that? And I go, well, I'm talking to you from my house in Florida, Although, <laughs> and I'm talking to you. Oh yeah, I'm down by the lake in Burlington. But but if you <laughs> want to make fun, you can make all the fun you want, right? So yeah. it's it's one of those things where people people love to do those kinds of things, but it's it's not it's not the reality of it. You know, yeah. you know, when Jim Lee sells a piece of artwork for $15,000 at a pop and he does a head sketch and he sells it for four grand. I mean, we're not, you know what I mean? We're, yeah. we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not asking for anyone's pity. Let's just put yeah. it that way, Right. So, I mean, and, and working on bigger books, like what I work on and Hasbro and all these things, uh, um, it, it's a very good living. It's yeah. a very good living. So I love to tell people that because people love to, love to make ask me these questions all the time it's like oh thank god your wife has a steady job and my wife is the first one said, oh, no. let's be real you know i make good money but trust me we're yeah. in a whole different atmosphere right you know so so now so i i want to follow up with i couldn't hear you your your mic are sure. you familiar with ace I'm not familiar of- with Ace. Oh, I'm not man. familiar with Ace. I, 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 I don't know that character offhand. But then again, uh, I grew up as an X-Men guy, right? So my, so it's weird. It's weird how it is now. People can like when I was growing up, you did you you're either a DC guy or a Marvel guy. Like you, yeah. you're not you're not you're not one or the other, right? You're either one or the other. So That's right. even within that, the subculture, um, I'll get to you a little bit of something about the culture of drawing and being a creative. It's 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 kind of a bizarre thing. When you whatever job you get hired for first is kind of the house that you stay in. Right. So like Jim Lee got hired as an X-Men guy. So everything he did is kind of X-Men related, you know? Um, Mm. So I got hired in the same vein. I'm hired as an X-Men guy. So, you know, you don't like to do Spider-Man would be like, Oh, like the other Spider-Man office would be like, Oh, like, 
you got to convince them kind of thing. If I were to say, walk in there and say, oh, I want to do this, they'd be like, well, no, but Ken, you're, you're, a, you're an X-Men guy or you're a Spider-Man guy, you're a Punisher guy or, or whatever house or Avengers guy. So uh, for me to do Spider-Man now was like sort of like, it's like a leap of faith for them because they're like, they're like oh, but Ken, you know, but just because the X-Men office goes, no, he's one of our guys. Right. right? See, like, like, let's put him on an X-Men project, but like, he, he's, he's one of our dudes. So that's why doing this, uh, the Spider-Man books has been a lot of fun because this is something I never thought I would get a chance to do, right? So it's, uh, um, so that's why I don't know a lot of the Spider-Man things because I was an right. X-Men guy growing up. So, you know, naturally I don't, I didn't buy all those books. And when you have a certain limited funds and you buy your stuff from a, <laughs> you buy your stuff from a variety store, yeah, you, you don't get the whole, the, the whole gambit of books. You get the ones that they want to bring. So you get the main titles and that's kind of it, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. I knew I'd, I knew I'd made it when I walked to the same variety store. I got my comics as a kid and saw my stuff in the in the rack. That's that's nice. when I knew I'd made it. Was it a Becker's or a Max Milk? It was a Becker's. One hundred percent Becker's. That's yeah. rad. So Ken, and I got my fifteen cent banana popsicle for my mom. That's how it goes. <laughs> so Ken, was your favorite X Men run uh, the late seventies, eighties? John Byrne, Chris Claremont, or do you have a, a bet? One hundred percent. John Byrne was my X Men artist and will always be my X Men artist. And um, I have a John Byrne sketch in my house here. I have a nice, I have a Conan that, he, that someone gifted me, which is crazy. But um, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, he was definitely great. And I met him, um, met him three times. The first time I didn't tell him what I did for a living. I just met him as, as a fan. And it was, it was on the second, second time somebody introduced me to him and he, he was like, oh, hey, you know, he was, he was always gracious. You know, he was gracious and kind. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, John Byrne definitely is, was, was my guy. Has that his st- did his style influence your style at all? I'm um, sure these questions all the time. Sorry, um, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I don't think. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to see what, what other people see. But I, I mean, right, I. Right. I definitely took some cues from what he did. You know, right. and, and but I also like the finish work. A lot of people like to give John Byrne all the credit, but it, you know, it's the the inker did a lot of the work too. So it's like mm-hmm. you know that there's there's two there's two artists on all those on all those uh, art on our art pieces. So when you see a beautiful John Byrne piece look at the anchor the anchor did they did their thing too so there's two artists and the yeah, colorist yeah. did their thing so i always think it's weird when people say oh i don't like ken lash's art on this book and i go well there's three people involved right you know? and they say well i love ken lash's work on this book i said well there's three people involved and so you always <laughs> have to make sure that everyone gets their due on, right. on the book um yeah. so yeah so i really loved um john Byrne inked by this you know by by I think it was bob layton and layton did something I mean, like i mean but i just like him inked by that person it looks it looks more it looks, it looks like what I think art should look like in comics. Yeah. So, so I love, I love John Byrne's work. So that's my favorite. Very cool. Mm-hmm. John Byrne grew up on him. Caught, he, I actually, John Byrne was the one that hooked me when I was younger. Um, yeah. When I, I got, I was at just a little variety store again. It was the, uh, the Hellfire, when they were fighting the Hellfire Club, I just caught right in the middle of that. Yeah. And then I went to the back issue. She's 134 was, to 137. Yeah, it's a brilliant <laughs> stuff. They, they keep trying to redo it in the movies, and it just the Phoenix yeah, saga. It's a different it just time. It's a different time. Yeah, but yeah. my favorite. That's my favorite John Byrne run. But my favorite John Byrne comics is the Champions. Yeah, oh so, right, I have those as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so, early uh, stuff of his, huh? Yeah, yeah early stuff of She-Hulk. his. If we ever did one, yeah, of I'm not a She-Hulk. I wasn't. I wasn't a big fan of the She-Hulk stuff that he did. Even even the Fantastic Four stuff. Even so much so that uh, a friend of mine who was, uh, owns a gallery. In, in uh metropolis that has he has some amazing pieces yeah. i actually bought a g-force uh, uh cell oh, from him so wow yeah. i love yeah. g-force man i know who doesn't love g-force come on now oh uh, well, I, and, uh, I like the way you called it g-force as well because usually when i mention that people don't know what i'm talking about yeah i call it g-force because most people don't know that god's rand is ready to leave it alone but um so and he had a he has a, a fantastic four page for sale and he said oh ken you always want john burn page here it is and he shows it to me and i go uh, it's fantastic four it's like, it's like, oh, I, like wow. I, I think it's cool mm-hmm. but if i'm gonna spend this amount i sure want an x-men page <laughs> like right. I, I want i want an x-men page, right and i had and i have two jim lee x-men pages from his uh, 240 240 i have like from you know the the run like the the, the two most beautiful thing and and i sold them i because i really wanted a john Byrne page and that's what i'm in john Byrne pages run for 40 grand and that's that's what you gotta that's if that's yeah. what you want you gotta go get right so <laughs> i like that i like that yeah i mean people thought i was crazy but i but i you ah. know i was like they were in a binder for 10 years what does that tell you if i really loved them i'd frame them right so i just so i mean that tells me like your soul is saying no you, you don't this is not 
this is not you you're, you're still searching for that thing yeah so so that's what i did i'm, I'm looking for that i'm still looking for it jj i saw one for, you had I saw a one for sale for two hundred and thirty thousand. so yeah, <sighs> That's a lot of money. Holy shit. Wow. What's the most expensive comic everyone has in their house right now? Chris, you got a few. What do you got, James? You got anything expensive comic wise in your house? What's the most expensive comic without having people come and rob your house? I'm just saying. <laughs> it's in a safety box. Uh, yeah. I can show up here if they want. Yeah. <laughs> I love I is there something cool in everyone? Like, there's, oh, yeah, this is, I, you know. I got an X Men number six. That's, that's, and it's like, you know, a 5.5 kind of thing. That's my best X Men number six. Like, the majority of my comics have more sentimental value than yeah. I think they do of uh, like money value. Like nice. the first comic books that I bought when I was a kid had the only little person hero of all time. And it yeah. wasn't even, it was Willow, the, the Lucasfilm, the Willow adaptation, the comic yeah. books. I bought those. Those are like my prized possessions. Love that. I don't, and like, it's just, one of those things when you're a kid and going through some of the crap that I went through being bullied and stuff and you see a suit and like a hero that saved the day that's a little person, that means more to me than the, any the of that kind of value. Yeah. yeah that's that's great. That's great. great. Chris, I think that great was the fun. whole point of this. You, you wanted to have this panel to talk about people that were inspired, you know. Yeah, because I was, I, I had to hide my comic. Uh, enjoyment from all my friends or else uh yeah I, I, the, the best quote was it's good thing you're good at playing a guitar man or else you're getting beat up at school every day Chris. It's, 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 uh, <laughs> james uh, has, there been, that problem. has there been a little person no since... no <laughs> so I'm, I'm i'm yeah I'm, I'm only i'm like five foot four i'm not a james has there been a little guy. person since that you've been able to train like some like, like they've done well like like comic book wise not really like that's the thing like they don't they like the little people have never been really kind of big in the comic books. Like, like if, like even back in the day when, when little people were even in the movies, they were the comic relief. They were mm -hmm. like odd job and, you know, yeah. characters like that. Yeah. Like, and still to this day, I don't think there is a little person hero or even a sidekick. That's. Yeah. I thought like, originally Puck, Puck, but then Puck, they, re, was the best they re, part. Puck was the best part of Alpha Flight. He was the, I, he yeah. was the, he was the smartest guy in the group. The 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 old old Wally vet. They all deferred to him all the time. Yeah. Puck mm -hmm. was Puck was by far the soul of Alpha Flight. Um, kind of a weird name, and his power was kind of weird. But other than that, it was it was one of the, I, I remember that as being a strong character. You know, and going oh I like that character. You know, I have a giant Alpha Flight poster in my office. You know, it's a, you I know with, with Puck as the center a center of it, and everyone's really small hanging off of his, off of his hands. Wow. It's, it's a great it's a great image uh, again john byrne right john byrne that's right that's why i got it <laughs> yeah that's great james would you yeah. okay so i want to ask i want to ask this question um jj you touched on it um with the time to, to like the anti-hero but also maybe in introducing new characters can your drawing based on obviously you get you know there's a plan there for what you're doing but to james's point are they just gonna create a little person character out of mm. the blue now or is it is it like uh we have to do this now because because everyone you know we have to make sure everyone's represented because if they haven't created anybody since willow then that seems like a bit of a miss and obviously uh, the amazing story of black panther coming and and changing that and that was incredible but there's still more there's still lots of work to do in a lot of underrepresentation. Underrepresentation, yeah. and you yeah. touched on that, JJ, okay. Chris. You wanted to have this panel to talk about just this because it's well, a, not just this. I just well, thought that would be a, this was a, this was a, that would be a nice segment. This is an important mm -hmm. part because Ken, it is, no, it totally is. And and as as I say, like there's so many characters from the past that I would love to see hidden gems get get uh, some treatment. Would be cool. Uh, okay, I, I have I have I have mixed feelings about that that. that that type of uh, how, how we how we how we go about this. This is my my true feelings are. Um, just when they open the door, you open the door, right? So the problem is is that we want the door opened in a certain way, and we want the door to open in a certain way for the right reasons, and we have to go through all these. There's like a checklist of things that 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 if if it's not done this way, then then it's not right. And I always say um, I don't care how the door gets opened. 
I just want I just want a chance to draw a black character. And if and and if it's if it's because they feel awkward about it or or it's Black Lives Matter has forced them to do something or they feel obligated to do it, so be it. Like I don't care. Like, I mean, I think it's time to get in there and stop, and stop worrying about all these stupid things that don't really matter. Like about, oh, I, I wanted them to do it 20 years ago. Well, they didn't do it 20 years ago. They're doing it today. So 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 let's just get on with today and get on with it and stop making it about other things that don't really matter. Just just get get to the next step. Like, like, like just get to the next thing that we're supposed to do. Yeah. So as a as a black creator, um, I know there's a mandate for them to you know, make sure that there that that everyone knows that there's a black guy doing this. I mean, sometimes right. that and sometimes you get offended, but other parts you go, good. Yeah. I'm glad there's they're, they're finally giving shine. If, if, if it means that I get a shine because because I happen to be, have be of color, so be it. But watch my work. My work is is of the quality of everybody else's. And it has been for a long time. It's just that now you're looking at it. And I'm grateful now that I can show the work that I've done and not have to say, not be, not to be classified as the black Jim Lee or the black, whatever. I mean, just, just like I'm Ken Lashley on my own merit and that's great. And sometimes I have to call people out, even on my own fan page. Like they'll say, I'll draw a picture and they'll liken it to something else. And then I always say, or Ken Lashley. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, so they'll, they'll say, Oh, this looks like blah, 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 blah. I said, or Ken Lashley. Yeah. And they, and I'm sort of like, like put them back on track as to what's really important. I think we, we get caught up in all this other stuff that really doesn't really make a whole bit, a lot of difference to the people that are involved. You know what I mean? Like say, Oh, they're, they're doing this now, or they're doing that, or they're only hiring this woman because she's a woman, or they're only hiring this because this guy's black or they're only hiring this because, or they're changing this. Gen- I mean, listen, man, that's, that's semantics. We need to, we need to worry about what's really important is that this person is giving an opportunity to do this and let them see what they do. Stop yeah. prefacing all their work or prefacing all the things they did by, by the color and the, the climate. Yeah, the climate has changed. Good for good, good for the first time that somebody is going to pull me over in my truck and have to worry about what their future might hold. Yeah, good for them. Good. So now they have to think about it because I've been pulled over the day I was featured on breakfast television. I was featured on breakfast television for my work. I did a Lucasfilm and I was I was there drawing live. And that same night. When I was driving my the crew that worked for me, I got pulled over by the cops because I was driving a nice truck in a neighborhood I shouldn't have been in. Wow, your neighborhood, yeah, my neighborhood. Right? <laughs> and, then, and then next thing you know, I know I have to. I mean, these are the things that happen. Yeah, these are the truths. But I'm not worried about it because I know I wasn't. I'm good. Yeah. So I'm just at this point now where I don't care how it gets done. I don't care what the climate is. All I'm saying about let's get going. We got some people here who are super ultra talented. Who have yeah. not been giving a chance to shine, whatever, let's shine. And we have groups of people out there who are yeah. desperate to be represented. Yeah. Uh, and they, and they and deserve to be. Yeah. Shout be. out Miss Marvel, Kamala I've Khan. Got, I've got I've got two daughters, man, who don't yeah. see themselves in any media. Yeah. And now now they do. They see themselves all over the place. I get, yeah. I love that. You know, everything's possible to that generation. I knew for my generation, walking to comic books, I thought, hmm, I want to draw comic books as a, as, a, as a black kid from Canada. Oh, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> and now it's like, you know, my kids have grown up with black presidents and CEOs are running companies and, and people, I mean, women directing, I mean, doing all, I mean, black Panther, I mean, they don't even think like how we, how we think. Yeah. They've seen so many crazy things. They think anything is possible. And that's, and my generation was, wouldn't it be nice? Yeah. And their generation is, why can't I? Why can't I? Yeah. Two totally different mindsets. Yeah. And it's hard to live in a house like that where these kids, when they say, I look at them like, I look at them like hey, oh, that's right. You, you, okay. You, you, all right. All right. Like, I'm not trying to give them the, okay, let me tell you this. Right. Let me tell you how the real world works. And let me tell you like all the, the, the stuff that I had, like the parents, my parents say, well, I know you want to draw comics, but people like us don't draw comic books and read all the, the, the that's kind of stuff. And, you know, yeah. my kids live in a house where they go, oh, this guy, this guy upstairs is doing this stuff for these big companies. And my, and my, and my mother does this and, and there's a black president and there's the you know, CEO and there's a black, and they don't even think like that. Yeah. It doesn't even cross their minds. And I think that's, that's the true, that's really progression to be honest with you. That's the progression for me. Yeah. Sometimes I'll just go up to my kids and they're eating cereal and, and I'll just take a, a bite of their cereal just, <laughs> just so they know it ain't all peace. It ain't all easy and peaceful. Yeah. <laughs> rough for me look i'm eating your cereal i'm eating your cereal taking the toy from the box <laughs> exactly. 
was the last time you saw a toy in a box? That's a long time ago, man. Oh, it's, yeah, it's the last time I bought cereal. It's, called, man. COVID. <laughs> it's called COVID in a box just, now. You just dated yeah, yourself there. You dated yourself. I did. I did. Awesome, boys. This is great. Uh, we've got about 30 minutes to go before they kick yeah. us off the network, which is fine. A um, few things to get to. Chris, do you have anything else you wanted to get to? Because I, oh, I just to wanted to ask Ken one more thing. I, I, you mentioned Jim Lee a lot. What's... Uh, well, yeah, like, I love his work and he's the... He's I the do too. Yeah, Hush is one of my favorite storylines uh, yeah. of all time. What what one uh, piqued you the most? Um, I, I mean, I mean, he's the... You know, and, and the column is sort of a friend now. It's kind of bizarre. It's bizarre, oh, yeah, but I mean, but it, I but it's, but it's, you know, it's. Um, I love all of the stuff that he's done. I mean, like my favorite things are, of of him are still the X Men stuff. And and um, I was doing a panel when he they asked me to do come to Milestone and do Milestone relaunch. Um, we was in New York City, and we did a panel together, and he was sitting next to me, and um, I leaned. Well, everyone's talking. I lean into him when I say, "Hey, man, can I get a drawing of Wolverine?" <laughs> That's and he awesome. looked at me laughing. You see on the video, he's looking at me like, what? Like, what am I going to get a chance to sit next to Jim Lee for an hour? Like, Let's go, That's right? amazing. So, so it was just funny, you know, and he was like, oh, God, come on, Ken. And then it was just like, and it was like he was like, oh, my God, why would you want something? It just, you know, it was pro to pro. And it was the first time, because, you know, there's there's two Kens. There's there's Ken who's a pro and there's Ken who's a fan, right? right. So I was a fan. Oh, I'm, I'm sitting next to Jim Lee. I mean, who wanna, who wouldn't want to, this is your chance. Let's go, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and now we're now we're sort of friendly, like it's friends, and it was like it's it's a, it's a bizarre thing. But I mean, I really like I, I'm an artist artist. I, I just bought some Garcia Lopez artwork. It was it was like dirt cheap from a site. It was crazy, and I got them, and they're oversized and beautiful work. And Garcia Lopez, for those who don't know, every every great Wonder Woman drawing ever in the history of of your T-shirts are drawn by Garcia Lopez. So he did all the JLA stuff. I mean, all those beautiful JLA shirts you have from this that look like they're drawn mm -hmm. in the '70s. That's all Garcia Lopez. So I, I got a Batman, I guess, sorry, I got a Superman drawing. It was a technical turn for a toy. And there's a beautiful drawing of Superman about to fly. It was just gorgeous stuff. And it was like, a few, it was a few hundred dollars. It was just well underpriced. So I, I bought it right away. Um, so I like artist art. So I mean, like, you mm. know, so I like guys like that. And Eminem is another Toronto guy who's super talented. And just, I just love guys, people who can know Barry Windsor Smith. You know, I mean, it's just, I love people who can really draw and make you feel stupid about yourself, you know? So. <laughs> I can't that's amazing i you are one of my favorites ken oh god for sure for sure i don't know about all that but you I'll, know what's funny it. today jj uh i was in here in vancouver today at golden age nice. collectibles golden age and i and ken i knew you were coming on um mm -hmm. james i couldn't find any little person stripper stuff from your memorabilia collection that i tried to get from lachlan he just couldn't get it out to the show in time so i i had to find something here that uh that we could do, but I was in golden age today and I was talking to the guys there about the fact that you were coming on the show and they're like, Oh yeah. Yeah. They're kind of looking around for, for some stuff. And then I hear a guy kind of off to the side, Ken, he goes, Oh, I'm a huge fan of him. And it turns out uh, his name is Ryan Hanneman. He's a PA on the flash out here. And he comes uh -huh. up to me. I got my little guy with me and he hands me this. <laughs> yeah, just <again. laughs> And then he hands me, this yeah okay, yeah, okay. Right. and then he's right. like and, and then he just kind of kept going about like and i was like well I, i'm going to uh movies next and i'm gonna go get and i don't have room to carry all this stuff out but i thought <laughs> i would bring this stuff up and it, it, it and uh cool. there's a I lot of people that uh, are big fans out here i was in the store for five minutes uh literally asked the question about where uh, you know what they might have the guys who ran the store we're kind of scrambling the fan the, the guy that ryan that was there was kind of like oh yeah just give me two minutes and he started pulling all this stuff out <laughs> yeah. of all your i do a lot of covers. covers which is great i do a lot of covers uh which is really they're cool sweet, so man. um you're, yeah it's it's a very awesome uh it's very awesome that it's it's you know nationwide and everyone you know that's in the know is in the know so uh really awesome of you to to come on here today yeah we really um, appreciate your time and um anytime, man anytime and anytime. jimmy uh buddy <laughs> Awesome to have you here too, because we've been getting shit about not having you on the show yet. So here we are. <laughs> we can take a lot of yeah, I've, Jimmy, I'm the Jimmy guy knows, knows more about comics than anybody in Edmonton, and he has, has nowhere to speak about it. Well, more let's go. Me. Let's hear it. Let's hear it, man. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Well, James, did you got an opinion on the uh, Winter Soldier there, Falcon Winter Soldier? Oh, huh? yeah. Like, uh, there's so much in there. Like. I was kind of disappointed at the end when they announced the new Captain America. 
U.S. agent, yeah. Like, I really did not, I wasn't a fan of that mm-hmm. with the fact that they discouraged Falcon from taking up the shield and gave it to him. I was really disappointed with with the way that was. My personal opinion mm-hmm. is I think Falcon is the next mm-hmm. Captain America. He'll get the shield back, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, every, every trailer shows that too. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I've got it in a comic book. So, if it's on the cover of a comic book, he's gonna get it back, right? But it, but was... it's just it's seeing that was kind of a little bit of a kick going. Oh, mm-hmm. come on, really? Yeah. yeah. You know, that's it's only episode they would one. Do, though, if that was if this is a real story, that's exactly what America what what the government would do. They yeah. would probably get some of your one hundred percent. But I think that's really cool because um, I've been buying a lot of Super Eminent pages, and he did that that black uh, the Falcon with the uh, with the with the shield. Um, mm. And I've just been buying them for like the last few years. I just oh, he's their sale. His inker sells them, so I have like ten pages of Falcon as, as Captain America. You know, the, in in this house, awesome. and I got some. It's like some of the pictures that they use on all their promotional material. I have those pages, like you know. So it's like it's amazing to have and. I, but I liked the art. I didn't, it wasn't because of this. It was like, how do you get your hands in super imminent art? You know, beautiful yeah. stuff, a black character, a Falcon. Awesome. Um, this other stuff, great too. But it happened to be that, you know, I have the, I have the greatest shot of him flying down with the shield. It's a great shot. I uh, maybe if I ever come back on, I'll, I'll, I'll do a show and tell and show you what I got, but it's a, nice. it's a great, it's great, but I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Um, and, um, there's a, there's a the problematic in some of the things that I watched in that cur- in, in, in the show. I was like, oh, but that's kind of exactly how it would be, you know. Um, I love the difference between the how some of the superheroes are are moved on and how you know his life is still he's still a black man, right? And I and I think right. I still think that's that's amazing, you know, trying to get alone, trying to walk into a place. That's amazing. And, I just, and I just remember thinking, yeah, man, that's so that the black experience that's so how it is like you know i don't i don't try not to dwell on it because it's not you know it's not really the world is the world has changed but it hasn't changed all that much. even though you are falcon you still don't qualify right and, I, I just and, kept and, saying and this is some bullshit this is some but, but bullshit hey, every, yo, the whole that, time i was like <laughs> get my, you hey, save man. the planet hey, I, I i went to buy a car and a tony two, three months ago <laughs> and and I, this is what this they looked at me and I was like, oh no 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 I'm paying cash no 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 friend they'd be like but but, yeah. but it was it was a moment of them just like oh hey brother man hey you know yeah, yeah. cars like well, it's expensive <laughs> you know I was like wow I know I didn't show up here unannounced and then it was boom and it was like it was that moment and then they found out what I did for a living and it was oh can I get your autograph I go. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, what's in it? what's <laughs> what, what, what am I getting some rims? Like what what, what yeah, are you yeah. <laughs> like maybe that's yeah. stereo in there. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I mean. Like the, the world has changed a lot, but not as changed that much. I thought it was really yeah. good. I was the, the opening the action sequence was amazing. Wow, that was um, oh yeah. I was just blown away by that. And they and you know, it's good to see a TV show with a with a with a movie budget. Yeah. And it was it was just an amazing thing to see. And I okay, let me tell you my Marvel studio story. Okay, I um I go to I'm 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 speaking at Adobe Max. I'm in LA. This is like two years ago, maybe two and a half, three, two two years ago, two years ago. I get this email from uh, um, Marvel saying, "Hey, you know, do you want to come by the studio?" And I said, "By the studio, like Marvel Studios, <laughs> Mar- like Marvel Studios, like, like whoa, 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 what are we talking about here?" So I respond right away. And I'm sitting at dinner. This is like, you know, one of the first nights. It was, yeah, you know, Ken, you know, we want you to come by and, you know, see the studio if you're in the, if, you know. And I was like, like Marvel Studios, Marvel Studios. And they're like, yeah, yeah, come on in, come in. Yeah. And I was like, holy crap, let's go, right? So I say, let's go. Um, not thinking about really what I was doing. Like I could really think about it. So I, I take I take my Uber, I get out there, and it's on the Disney lot, right? And I'm thinking, where am I going? Like, I thought I'm going to, oh yeah, that's where they're, that's, this is, this is the mothership, Ken. This yeah. is the mothership, right? So I get out, I get out the Disney gates, I get out, I say my name, they go, yes, you are here. Here's your thing. Here's your little thing you got to sign. And, you know, they go into that building. That's the, Mar- that's the Marvel Studios building. You know, I was like, okay, I, I go in the Marvel Studio building. I pass another security test. I go into this elevator. I get to the top. I go, I get to the lobby 
and it's Ant Man, Mini, this, the three Iron Man suits, the like, like, that, like <laughs> wow. it's just like holy crap, right? And I'm sitting and I'm standing there going, "This is amazing! Thank you, they offered me a tour. This is an amazing thing." And um, the the the, sec- uh, the the receptionist, she says, "Oh yeah, you know, this is really cool. Here, put your handprint here <laughs> on this." Put, no, no joke. Put your handprint on this thing. Sign it here. Like, you know, so. Wow. Okay. Okay. And I said, this is pretty intense for a tour, but I'll take it. And then, and then she goes, oh, yeah, those are the three Iron Man suits. That's a mark. I said, yeah, mark three, mark five, mark seven. Right. And she goes, she looks at me like, Whoa. I said, listen, lady, I'm from the mothership. Like, don't worry. Don't like that. <laughs> like, whatever. Right. So, so they come and get me and I go to the Thor boardroom. They have like different boardrooms are called for different characters. So I go into the Thor boardroom and I'm thinking, this is awesome. This is like, oh, what am I going to see? What am I going to see here? Um, and then they comes out and Ryan Dinger, does Ryan uh, Manager, who does all the artwork for the beginning of the opening credits. I mean, mm-hmm. those beautiful uh, paintings. He comes Oops, out and yeah. I'm thinking, wow, wow, that's like the head. Hey, he's a heart. He's in charge of visual development. And then this director comes out. I go, what? Hey, well, like what's? Hey, where's the tour? Like, you know, and they're like, oh no, this is not a tour. This is a job interview. Oh shit. And I was like, uh, job interview. Yeah, don't yeah, this is why we, we want you to come because we want you to, to work here. And I was like, I don't even have a portfolio. Like I like I just I just <laughs> thought I was going on a tour, right? And they're like, oh, would you ever would you ever relocate? And I'm thinking, this went from hey. To like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was I was not prepared. He goes, oh well, don't you live in L.A.? And I said, no, I'm only here because I'm. I just, oh, we just happened to call you. Like, when it, you're happy to be in L.A. Wow, you know you're, it's just like all these things happened, and wow, you know what I mean. So I did a job interview for working, and I think they wanted me to work on uh, Black Panther two. I think that's kind of what was gonna happen there, and I had to say. Uh, I had to say no. Uh, I wasn't fool. Uh, you know? <laughs> fool. <laughs> Why would you <laughs> say no? no? It was, it was, okay, <laughs> let me preface that. There wasn't a job offer where they said this is what we want you to do. It was more like, oh, okay, so you're not local. Too many things will have to line up. And then it was, it was sort of like, hmm, but let's keep in touch. And you know, it was one of those right. things. Right? So uh, it was one of those moments in your life where you go. I think if I had known I was going for an interview, I think I probably would have been way more. I wouldn't have been so happy go lucky and <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but I just went there for a fun time and it was a great. And I was taking, I was in the lobby taking pictures. Like I was like, <laughs> yeah, really wants the job, man. He's <laughs> well, well, and, they were, and, they, and I think that's made it fun. I think that's what made it fun. And they were like super cool with it, you know, because uh, they were like, oh, this guy g- gets it. This guy's yeah. not. I'm not too. But also the artwork. It was really cool. Like, I because I didn't really think of it as a job interview, I met the head of video development, but I wasn't kissing his butt. I wasn't, hey, buddy, buddy. You know, I was just like, right. hey, what's going on? I love your work, blah, blah, blah. And just, just talking to people like that. And when they said, oh, would you like to relocate? I go, relocate to what? Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, oh, you know, you know come here and work. And I go, whoa, okay. And Probably like, did yourself a service by going in with the wrong mentality, <laughs> going yeah. in as, a, as just a fan. And you know what they did? I said, I don't have a, I, I thought I was just coming for a tour. I was, okay, so then they pulled up my my Instagram. We're, we're going through my Instagram. Like that's a, awesome. that was sort of like them looking at the work. Oh yeah, well, of course, we love, we love your stuff. You're, you're, and I was like, man, I wish I had thought about this before I showed up. Would have worn a suit. I would not want to. <laughs> you could have been like, you could have been like, I won't take the gig, but I want unlimited access to this place. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I'll I was, just, I'll I was not one thinking. Drawing, I'll do one for you every six weeks and then I'm in. I want in. 100%. Then I went to DC the next day. It was such a weird trip. I went to DC's head office the next day and I got offered Superman. Okay. <sighs> so. And I said no. <sighs> what a day. JJ, is that my turn to go? What the fuck? <laughs> <What? laughs> well, I'm a DC it's, guy. It's, I can't tell what's going on. It was here. way down the road. I was I had spawn on the table. I was way down the road, and it just you know they hadn't they even had assigned a writer to it yet. So I was like, well, you know, if it works out, give me a call. But right now it's like you're saying, take, like sign up to do sign up to do Superman. We don't know anything about else other than that it's going to be a Superman title. And I'm like, well, okay, but I, I don't even know who's writing it. I don't know when it's going to start, and I have other jobs right on place. So I guess a lot of things have to line up, right? Mm-hmm. And so it was cool, but it just wasn't they weren't really ready to have that conversation with me yet, if that makes sense, you right. know? And um, so I, I said, well, you know, if it all works out and then Dan did you got let go. So I was in the Dan office and then he got let go like a month, a month later. So 
Um, and then they went a the different direction. And now they're saying, oh, if we'd have known you were in the building at the time, I would have given you that. <laughs> right. I was like, well, maybe you should. I don't know. Right. It was one of those things where we didn't know Dan was talking to you about doing Superman. Mm, right. And because the two people that I talked to was Bob Harris and Dan DiDio. And they got let go. So right. it's like it's like wild, wild west. And then they see me doing other stuff, other places. And go, oh, it would be awesome for Kennedy Rick. And then I go, well, you, you did ask me, but. And they're like, what do you mean? And they're like this whole thing. I said, yeah, I could have done it, but talk to Dan. <laughs> That's how life works. While we're on DC, is is it too? Have, has everyone seen the Snyder Cut as yet? Do we have time to even talk Just about it? Watched it. People see it. I don't have it? Crave. I can't watch it. Oh, all right. So <laughs> my good friend did all the special effects for that. His name is DJ. Oh, what? Uh, John, John wow. DJ. Yeah, he's Who really don't you know? He does. <laughs> Ace, you don't know Ace. <laughs> you don't, I, forgot. I don't think anybody knows Ace, bro. Yeah, people know Ace. Knows Ace. He's, he's, he's Everybody's going to pitch Ace. that to Marvel yes. the next you know, time he talks to him. Nobody's right? Googling Ace. After this. Let's be and I forgot yeah, to. He's, he's forgot a good to friend of mine. To mention, everyone um, has to bring and, uh, something to the podcast, Ken. I forgot to mention, everyone has to bring something to the podcast. Oh. So if your buddy can just send me the whole thing, I'll watch it at home. <laughs> I don't have crazy. Yeah. I mean, he's, his, his, his work is pretty amazing. He also did uh, Sucker Punch. Uh, so so that's oh yeah he's, he, did, he did a lot of he does everything that Zack Snyder does so right. he, oh, okay. he does all of all of his all of his movies so he did Sucker Punch uh, Green Lantern as well uh, he did some he just he does a lot of John uh, DJ DJ uh, we we'll call him DJ on um, John Dijer's end is his name so um, just some crazy stuff I'm actually actually he's probably I was supposed to do a project with him and I have I've fallen down on, on getting the artwork to him so. You probably, I owe you something. Sorry about that, John. He's a good guy. <laughs> but um, yeah, so his work is amazing. And, you know, he does some beautiful special effects and, you know, crazy, crazy stuff. And um, he did X-Men. He did the greatest scene in X-Men, you know, where uh, Wolverine's, Wolverine's uh, trying to, um, Wolverine versus Jean Grey, that scene. Yeah. Where he's walking up and he's getting his bones, you know, where you see his, oh. his bones. He did that yeah. scene. Um, and he's also, he's a supervisor. So he's, he's the guy in charge of the crew. So he hires the crew. Right. So he's like the main guy. So when you see it, when you watch the movie, it says special effects supervisor, John D DJ. So, um, so it's pretty cool and such a nice guy. Um, I met him in a few years, like lots of years ago. And we just hook up every year in San Diego. We meet up and talk and, you know, his, his, his life is so crazy. Like, you know, I was working on this movie and that movie and this movie. And I go, yeah, I was writing some comic books, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's a big different thing. But um, I mean, but we both, but, he, but everybody loves comic book art. So, you know, everyone's sort of like, oh, I would wish I could draw like like you and it's, you know, and I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, <laughs> but it, that, that's that's the way it works, right? So I'm sure so, all so when I saw it, I knew it'd be good because that's the kind of person that John is. Um, and, it, and he had the money to do what they did. That's why when he worked on, on Green Lantern, it was sort of like they had already done it and it was finished and it was like awful. And they said, help us. So, <laughs> so, and he was like, well, what do you want me to do? And so he basically tried to redo shoots, but he, he had a limited budget and limited time. Mm -hmm. So it looked better than it did, but it wasn't a full a DJ, uh, DJ spin on it. And I, and I felt bad for it because he got, oh, he got panned as a, as a, as a product. But, you know, when you're, when you're late to the party, you know, it's, you know, you can only, you know, you didn't, you weren't there, you didn't buy any of the groceries, so you can't be playing for how the meal comes out, right? So right. Like, that's what I'm saying. So, but, but we, we should him, start a hashtag, the DJ cut, release the DJ cut. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. And that's what I mean. Like, you know, it's just, it's an amazing thing to see how it looked. I mean, it was cool. I mean, there's, it was just a better movie. I mean, I saw it and took me eight hours to watch it because I stopped and it just stopped, to, took a break, yeah. took a nap. Came back. <laughs> it was good. It was a good point today. Can't wait to see it. Chris, you just saw it. James, did you see it? Uh yes. What'd you think, James? Oh, totally different movie. Oh yeah. It was completely. it was so good. I yeah. was impressed by all of it. Yeah. Like it, it was it was more than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Two I hours had more. Reshoot, they they brought they re, they brought the I haven't seen it yet, so this is the, this is me going. Uh, heard they, had to, they had to do uh, the, the reshoot the joker scene and bring in a few little things to add to the mix that yeah. made it even better which i think is pretty cool yeah, Chris, it's, just it's, watched that, yeah. it's also weird that warner brothers came out yesterday and said that they're not moving forward with any of the ideas presented in it you know, sort of like Again. then they why why then why bother you know <laughs> you know like, like you go through all this stuff and there's so many great 
things now they could do and but they just go eh. yeah well, well you know we're gonna do this you know, we can I, go for another that's... hour with that chris that's your biggest complaint about dc oh is the continuity yeah that they don't continue on movie to movie and connect them but it looked like from the snyder cut they were about to start this whole dc universe it looked really cool um I, I, yeah as i say i, I just yeah. finished watching i loved it i don't i don't i don't understand uh, well okay i'll tell you the difference between working at the two companies dc is really serious dc are serious they're it's like everything's serious marvel is sort of like a bunch of fans mm. right so so the difference in the product is the same is that now what's good about it is feige is sort of like corporate guy but still a fan right so so that's why the the he he honors the, the source material it's it's this you know it's like a, you know he's like oh he loves this stuff they always talk about the comic books it's always this thing and they the synergy between the two is so great but DC is still a very serious company. Like they do things very serious way. They're, you know, the contracts are serious. The everything is serious, serious, yeah. serious. And it comes and it shows up in their products. Right. But it's yeah. weird because their animated stuff is so much better than the Marvel stuff. Like it's it, it, it's just it's weird how the head it, it just they translate better to animation. Like their animated stuff is just some, I think it's some of the best comic books that created is the animated stuff that they do. It's just, I just love that stuff. Yeah. But I but the, when you work for the companies. Like I could say to Marvel, yeah, man, I'll get that done. That's cool. And the guy would like, okay, Ken, what's up? Blah, 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 blah. You don't talk that way to DC editors. DC editors are like, this is my assistant. This is, this is not, this is, like, it's very much a machine. Wow. And right. you fit into a cog and you do your thing. Um, you know, if you're, if you, if they want, like, there's like, there's like breakdowns for six months deadlines and covers. I mean, like, this is, this is the, this is the program, right? Marvel is like, dude, I need a cover. It's going to print on Monday. It's Thursday. Hey, bro. <laughs> You're like, okay, man. Okay, I got this. What do you need? Just a cool shot of Venom. We're good. We're good. Let's go. And they're like, all right. You know, and they're like, they're like, Thanks for getting it done. And and you know, here's a here's a box. So here's you know, it's just that's the difference. Like it's much and it's a little bit more fun to work at Marvel, but a little bit more stress if you think about it because it's like mm-hmm. this is the, you know, because it's like yeah. we don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of time to. To make it spectacular that's why dc stuff is a little bit more involved you know you where they are getting it right superman and lois great new series i haven't seen that yet I fantastic that yet. filmed right around the block right <laughs> around the block cool. literally oh really they built smallville like two blocks from my house it's pretty great that's amazing wow. that's we, got really superman, like the... we got superman film here and we got john cena yeah. here all in, all in the same week they're all just kind of filming at the <laughs> that's pretty cool town because the original smallville remember the original smallville show yeah, yeah. That yeah, they had yeah. that was filmed here in Cloverdale, BC. But because oh, wow. it's such a busy little town now that they replicated the town. That's amazing. And, and moved it over ish and then built Smallville kind of over on the side. Wow. And um, anyways, new Superman and Lois, like five episodes in. Just I won't go on it because I think I'm the only DC guy here on this panel, but I'll just say I just haven't seen they've it. done a killer job. Killer job. I I'm a fan. There you go. Hey James. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. You can come back saying. anytime. <laughs> I'm the only DC guy ever on these panels. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're a Superman and Batman guy. That's great. I really like Titans. I thought Titans was a great show. The, the two seasons of it. Yeah. Is it done now? I think Titans? season three's coming out. Oh, okay. I think. I think so too. Yeah, because I think they're going to kill off Jason Todd from what I've, or not kill him off, but you know, do his his revert yeah. there. I started watching it with my kids. It is not Teen Titans. No, Titan just Go. not for kids. No. <laughs> Heads up! I, I, <laughs> it's nuts. It's very adult. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't, yeah. Get, into, I can't get into Teen Titans Go because you guys. That's the reason why there's no Young Justice. So I, I just like I, I just don't. I don't like. Oh that. yeah, they replaced the Young it. Just, well, they they canceled Young Justice so they could go oh, Teen Titans Go, and I was like, Young Justice was one of the best things they ever made. I love that cartoon. So good. Yeah. What about Doom Patrol? Did you guys see Doom Patrol? Watch a bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's different, huh? Yeah, like I the comic book is. Didn't hook me. Didn't hook me as much as the other stuff. Mm-hmm. but it was good it was cool yeah it's different that's for sure wow like yeah. the doom patrol stories to begin with are really crazy but I, I was pretty taken back when i heard they were going to make a show of that mm-hmm. fellas that's wow wow really awesome today like this is some great stuff that we covered thanks today. so much for coming on ken i really really thanks appreciate it man it was great to hear your stories buddy no, james thanks for bringing uh bringing it and coming on finally getting on the show you guys Thanks are all for... welcome back anytime. Thanks, James. Um, we'll, Thanks, I'll buddy. go around the horn and, and find and uh, and uh, see where everyone can uh, find you guys online and everything. JJ. 
Uh, you can find, well, my show, which I produce uh, on CBC Music nationwide, 94.1 in Toronto. I don't know where what it is anywhere else. It's called The Block. Uh, and of course, uh, every Thursday, aka Friday Junior, we release, uh, Melanie and I release our uh, our podcast, Unfiltered with JJ and Melanie. Before I go, please, Google Ace. He's a <laughs> guy. He's a real dude. I'm 1989 Spectacular I might Spider-Man. even have that comic. I might even <laughs> Right next to Sleepwalker. Nice try, <laughs> Oh, I have that too. I got that too. I mean, beside Dark Hawk. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. James. There you go. Uh, uh, 95.7 Cruise FM in Edmonton. And I'm on the morning show. So 5.30 to 10, Monday to Friday. Awesome, buddy. Awesome, awesome buddy. Awesome. And Ken, sir. Um, just, you know, Lead Killer um, Instagram. Lead Killer uh, on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter that often. I'm working for Marvel right now and um, Magic the Gathering and was of the Coast and Hasbro and some other stuff like that. And I'm doing all kinds of titles, DC covers, all kind of stuff. But I'm uh, slated to do uh, uh, some book with Penham or Venom. I forget his name. Um, and, uh, the, that hasn't been announced yet, but uh, that's my next project. And I'm doing cover for uh, um, some of the Batman titles. Amazing. My Bravo. All cool. three of you guys, anytime. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, here. JJ coming on and talking anytime yeah, there's yes. lots to cover I appreciate all the time it, some important stuff that we covered today so thanks everybody for weighing in because it's super yeah. important um to cover all this stuff off and james i'm really glad you brought up that um you know willow was your only your only go-to and i think that needs to be fixed and and um and True. ken great uh, all the work that you're doing and and just everybody JJ, just keep going ken my gosh man just all you Keep guys going, buddy. Doing, yeah, doing, we're cheering I was, on. I was thinking about stopping, but thanks for the thanks. For no, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, what about I, you, Brenton? Where can we see you? On the internet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can catch me Wednesdays on. Uh, you can catch me Wednesdays at Brenton on Tour podcast uh, every Wednesday on the Dean Blundell Network. Awesome. And uh, covering coffee, music, travel, and life. So there's like four different things that I'm always kind of circling and going around with right now. So. Every Wednesday, something new from one of those four categories comes out. Talking That's to somebody cool. about life, which I'm actually going to, I'm going to steal this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this audio and release it as a life episode. <laughs> really? Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm doing two, <laughs> two different ones. Yeah. No, but but I, I do that. And um, that's cool. Kids, and obviously Chris and I, kids on the escalator every Tuesday nights. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and Chris is on, uh, I mean, awesome. doing tons of shit. I think I might start a podcast. I think I'm going to start one. <laughs> you should. Do it. Think, I'm thinking I think about you it. Should. Thinking about uh, it. I got a lot of crazy stories. That's Sean JJ. That's Ken. That's uh, Jimmy. And appreciate uh, we, we appreciate you guys coming on today. And, Thank uh, you. Come back anytime, please. Thank you, fellas. Thanks, Thanks guys. I appreciate Have a good it, guys. Night. Thanks, awesome. Ken. Later. Good, good to see you, man. Everybody. James. Bye. Bye. Big one. We cut we that. We cut with a minute to spare. We covered a lot of stuff, though. Man, so much important stuff there. You know. Yep. There could, like, I, when you're talking about, like, just when you're talking about some of these little character, these characters that you that you brought up before, and mm-hmm. you know, have Jimmy talk about the fact that uh, he didn't have anybody. You know, Willow was it. Yeah. No, that was, I mean, that was, I never would have thought. Yeah. That's a tough, that's a tough one. You know what I mean? That's a tough one because there's, yeah. he's a, he, he speaks, I mean, obviously from that's the only little person that was represented, but, but um, he, that speaks to everything, like every single person that's, that's, that's going through anything or whatever. It, are they represented? JJ talked about it. Ken faces it every single day, you know? Um, oh man. What a great, what a great chat i loved yeah it, it's good that they were that they're cool about it too you know what i mean because i imagine it's the kind of thing that you get sick of talking about like mm-hmm. you know yeah but what a great line by ken if i'm not important enough to talk to me in january then don't talk to me in february well yeah exactly it's, I, I didn't even <sighs> yeah amazing yeah. amazing amazing and uh hopefully they'll all come back all the time mm. and uh, do more so yeah no he's got uh, the ken stories are amazing there it's like he just you know, I revert back to being a little kid again there. Where I just, you know, you just want to sit back and let the teacher talk. It's, uh, he's got so many cool stories. So it's, uh, it seems like it's just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, just the beginning. I mean, geez. I mean, I'd love it. 
just not just beginning. comics he's done right like mm. he's done everything it's yeah amazing and thanks to jj for, for hooking that up that was jj hooking totally. all that up for us buddy really appreciate it and you know because it was funny because as we you know jimmy obviously coming on for the first time he, uh at first debut for jimmy to come on the show welcome to come back anytime but as you would see as we do these shows jj's been on a bunch and and started sort of like hitting and running with some of his favorites but then the more jj was coming on the show the more we were getting the backstory of jj and learning how deep into comics he really was which is awesome and uh thanks to our sometimes co-host mike pongratz for connecting us with jj so this is mm. great all these worlds are all coming together now um and and uh just really really awesome that uh all these people are doing amazing things so you know yeah we'll have to have jimmy on again sometime too yeah jimmy and uh great stuff too because i think he wants to dive into some movie stuff and yeah the rest well, of it, so. they're all they're all welcome to come back anytime they want skeletron update what's going on skeletron well it's issue two's out there it's doing good we're a patreon mm -hmm. we're getting some more people out there and getting closer to being able to uh put it in the actual stores which is great um got a couple uh commissions i'm working on right now which is always good too mm -hmm. just finished off a couple got a new one going so i'm keeping busy which is good i'm always busy teaching Got some workshops going on. Of course, I've got my new toy that I've been playing with here. You know, we got our Duke Kaboom. Duke Kaboom. Stuck. <laughs> Love my toys. You can catch Chris on TikTok racing, Duke Kaboom. Yeah, as I say, check check out his. He's only done one one jump. It was successful. He jumped a whole bunch of Star Wars characters. So we're going to up, up the ante here and uh, see what happens. But that's on TikTok. Follow me on TikTok. Chris Machete on TikTok. Guitar and on lessons Twitter. last night. Lots of other stuff, too. Yeah, guitar lessons. That was great. Yeah, doing saw them you up. Saw you lose a hockey game on Twitch the other night. Yeah, but you see the fight? And that was my <laughs> character, Chris Machete, that did that too. Yeah. So you can catch us on Twitch, wherever you're watching us. Huge thanks to Dean Blundell and the network over there for okay. hooking that up. Um, uh, big thanks to my friends at Golden Age this today for the great experience down there. That was awesome. That's in Vancouver and Granville Island go, or Granville Street. Go check it out. Uh, Ryan Hanneman, uh, thanks for uh, sorting me out with this stuff. This came in handy today, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's sweet. Well, great art. Amazing. Very, very cool. Talented dude, my friend. Uh, Lonnie's got a fantastic graphic for our friends at Blue Microphones. Oh, yeah. Because we use Blue Microphones. Here it is. Blue Microphones, the official sponsor of the Dean Blundell Network. And uh, this podcast, the Brent Not Super Podcast, uh, all the rest of it, they send us these beautiful mixed by headphones. You can see them there. And these Blue Yeti X, which are totally rad. And uh, make us, well, make Chris sound like a million bucks. But <laughs> Well, they make you sound great. You don't need any help sounding great, Brent. There we go. There we go. Uh, lots more to cover, man. There's lots more shit coming on the following weeks because uh, WrestleMania is coming up. We got a, a wrestling chat on the way. We've got uh, some more movie talk. We got to dive into Winter Soldier some more. <sighs> lots, lots going on. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots coming up. So make sure you join us, everybody, next Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. What are we doing next Tuesday? Do we know? Well, I've I've, I've just found out that Daryl Hurst from uh, Indie Week in Toronto wants to come on the show. Okay. So cool. uh, I think we'll get some. We'll, we'll go back and do a little bit of music talk in there for probably 25, 30 minutes, and uh, kind of talk about okay. the state of indie music in Canada and what they're kind of going through. Not too different than what the Kingston Film Festival was going through, where they mm. had to take everything online. So uh, we'll get Daryl on to kind of talk about how you build an independent an, an indie music fest that that you know in essence is the go-to for indie music but how do you do it without anybody being able to come see a show so i think we're going to touch on that uh uh we'll talk to mike see if he's available to come back on we'll do a bit of a winter soldier thing cool. yeah sounds uh, good well if uh, we're doing indie music there. if we're doing indie music in canada or toronto man if there's any of those bands out there that want to send in a link we'll check out your tunes and if we like it maybe we'll talk about you Maybe we'll there even you have know. you on the show. Who knows if you're really good. Oh, maybe right? an indie segment. Uh, so yeah. Indie segment. Just, just, uh, you know, just throwing it out there. Maybe we'll, we'll put a Twitter or a Facebook or a little bit of message out there saying if you got a tune. Isn't in everyone indie here. now? Like, I if, guess like, so, right? <laughs> everyone's yeah. got their own thing now. So any band, hero, all these, yeah, yeah, every metal good. band. Hey, Corn, Corn are on an indie label. <laughs> like, I'm just saying if there's indie bands there now, go. they're all on an indie label. And indie is the cool thing to be because you have yeah. self-control. Thanks, everybody. That's the Kids on the Escalator podcast for this Tuesday night. We'll see you next week. We uh, did. Thanks for joining us on all the platforms. Good times. Rad dudes. Yeah.